Windows Defender no more. It's not on my system, it just doesn't even exist. Go into Program Files, under C, Program Files, and Windows Defender, you'll notice there's not a whole lot going on here. And this is, you know, just a regular old Windows system. Windows 10, Windows 11 installs Defender much the same way. But I kind of wanted to talk about Defender a little bit because I think a lot of people get caught up in detection rates. Specifically, when you go to scan and you look at all the information online about Windows Defender detection rates, you'll see, well, it does okay. And that basically means, well, if it's okay on detection rates, then it should be just as secure as any other antivirus. And I'd argue that is definitely not the case. So I want to show you for a whole bunch of reasons that Windows Defender is probably the worst antivirus you can use. And if I was a virus manufacturer, I want to show how I would infect thousands of Windows PCs that only rely on Defender. So what are the different methods you can do for disabling Windows Defender? And why would you even do this? So first off, there's Windows settings where you can just go into your Windows screen and set this and click real-time protection off. And for the most part, this will disable Windows Defender somewhat. There's a lot of components to Windows Defender that a lot of people don't realize that Microsoft has kind of gobbled together over the past 10 years. But uh, we'll get into that. The second, and probably the way I like to do it, is through the registry. Now, I, I actually made a tweet about this and said, hey, here's how I would go about, or the main things I'd hit to disable Windows Defender, anti-malware, real-time protection, and a lot of the, the smart screen capabilities of Windows Defender. And a lot of people were like, well, wait, Defender's not that easy. You can't just add a registry setting and then it just disables it, right? And I was like, oh, well, yeah, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> I, I made a little registry setting right here. This Windows Defender disable.reg is actually a little more comprehensive than what I put on my website article for this video. This just gives you kind of the basics of it, but there's a lot more registry settings that you can go into and disable. And registry kind of controls, it's the brain of Windows. It always has been for 20 plus years. So you can do pretty much anything you want to your Windows install through registry. That includes disabling services. And if you disable these services through registry, Windows Defender can't work. So you could easily disable a lot of the settings and do it through registry right here, but you could also disable the service dependencies to make and render Windows Defender worthless and just pointless. Once you've deleted most of that, or you've turned off Defender, you can actually go through C Program Files Windows Defender and erase all the files like I did on this system. And you can even turn off active monitoring and many things. I have a, a little tweet I made about that and people are like confused. They're like, wait, what are you doing? You, are you disabling parts of Windows Defender? And yeah, you can do that through simple PowerShell commands and disable certain aspects of it. So that kind of brings us to the point of why you would do this, because uh, Windows Defender can protect against some viruses. I would argue not nearly as much as pretty much any other antivirus because those antiviruses aren't so widespread. So many people now rely only on Windows Defender that if I was a virus manufacturer, I would immediately use the built-in tools Microsoft gives us administrators to disable and deliver payloads to the end user. You might be thinking, okay, well, not everybody knows that, Titus. And those that do know it probably have a job somewhere and they don't want to do it. Yeah, you're right, but look at this. Someone actually created a GitHub article, you know, GitHub that Microsoft owns, and this has been going for a while, and they said, hey, uh, De Defeat Defender is the name of this certain thing. It can deliver payloads through a simple batch file. Yeah, it can disable UAC, uh, disable ransomware protection, disable task manager. It can disable so much stuff all from one run of this program. This is obviously uh, not a payload system. There's no virus attached to this project. There's no release that you're going to download to do this. It's more of a, hey, if you're a virus manufacturer, this is how you would deliver payloads to systems that only use Windows Defender. And they have like a little article for the proof of concept. 
and it goes through this script, mostly Python based, it looks like, but it's really neat way of infecting those that only use Windows Defender as protection. And then you can look at other GitHub uh, projects for disabling Defender. Now, I, I don't recommend doing any of this, mind you. When I'm talking about the GitHub projects, I want to show you uh, the code, and then we can use that code to disable it and do it ourselves. Never run anything or blind executables on Windows, especially if you're looking at disabling or removing antivirus, if you only are using Windows for a specific purpose. So when I'm on my Windows machine back here, well, a lot of times my purpose is to just launch Steam and play a Windows only game like Destiny 2 or, or something of that nature where I would launch into it and only use the system for it. And I don't want it getting bogged down by real-time scans, indexing, and many other uh, Windows utilities that, that really drain performance from me. So getting back over here, they do have executables that rip out and destroy Defender for you. I caution you against using this type of stuff because it's so easy to get abused. So what we can do though, is look at these projects and exactly what they're doing. And most of them, if we go up to here and click like disabler, you can see the reg files that they have for disabling certain things. I would stick strictly to the registry side of things if you're using that system still. Now, if you wanna delete it completely and you just are on a vendetta to delete all the executables like I did, I call it the scorched earth uh, routine mainly because there's no coming back from that. When you delete all those files, you're gonna to have to do like a DISM system restore to get them back. So I don't recommend that method. Registry is so much more flexible because we can disable all the services, the protection, the scans, all those things through a reg file like this. Most of them are policies that are done on the system themselves. So these policies are on every, like Windows Home, Windows Pro, it doesn't matter. You, you put this in and it will disable Defender. And then if you need Defender for whatever purpose in the future, you could just come to the E version and this enables and resets it back to normal, or you can create system restore points. This is the best method for disabling Windows Defender for performance-based machines. And I will just say, this is very revertible. That's why it's the method I recommend. And why I don't recommend executables is because of the first one I showed you. This one is designed to deliver virus payloads. It's easy to change these projects in the future and they could infect you if something went wrong. Hopefully GitHub would catch that, but I don't want you relying 100% on these projects. Relying 100% on a project is just a recipe for disaster. That's why I wanna show the registry approach. But there's also these types of ones where they don't show any of them. Uh, I'll put a link, this is probably my favorite one where he broke it out, made it much more modular, where you can uh, just go through the registry side of things and you can see what each one and the registry entries for each component of Defender. You got your security, you got your smart screen, you got your spyware, you got all these different components of Defender that this is disabling. And you, I say, pick these out and then make your own registry file to run. But if you just want to go scorch earth and remove it at the time, you could run his releases Again, I don't recommend it. This one only has like 60 stars <laughs> and it's an unknown developer, but I still love the fact it's all documented here and I don't need to run the executable file. I can just use the registry entries. So I want to leave you with this thought. When it comes to Defender, a lot of these things I showed today are what system admins use to disable Defender because as a system admin at a business, I'm gonna tell you, I need to disable Defender to install a good protection software because any other antivirus, I'm not gonna name any in this video, any other one I find to be better protection because most viruses will be engineered in the future to bypass Windows Defender. And it will be pretty easy to do uh, because of these things. And, and Microsoft's not gonna disable it because as an administrator, I need those policies, those built-in things to disable Defender to use software that basically sends it back and says, hey, this user's being stupid and they're trying to run this program. And then I get dinged, I get my email. Defender doesn't have that. And maybe they add it in the future and then all of a sudden lock it down and force you to use it and take away all these things. 
but there's so many different spots in the system I can go to get around Defender. And I wanted to show those and make an article to say, hey, Defender, yeah, it's decent for its catching of viruses, but it's very easy to bypass and deliver payloads for those that know what they're doing. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.